Well, great to have your company on Revelation TV Presents with myself, Anne Dawson. Uh, you may be aware that we've got a great series uh, at the moment with, of course, uh, Philip Day, who joins me in the studio here. Uh, I really love what we're doing at the moment, Philip, where we're kind of coming in at it from all angles, you know, looking at all different elements to our well-being. We are a tripart being. We've been um, looking at other areas, but today we're going to be concentrating on what, considering we are a Christian channel, uh, for many people watching, we'll say it's by far the most important. And you're associated with health, and today we're going to be talking about spiritual health. Now, I want to start off by saying um, there's a, a phrase you're very fond of, and it's a Latin phrase. Would you like to elaborate on that? You're not going to try and pronounce it. It's respice finem, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, respice finem. Yeah. It's actually the, the motto of my uh, daughter's school. Is it? Respice finem. And sometimes in my, in my um, uh, live talks, I go, respice finem, anybody? And they'll like, look and go, <laughs> yeah. It means know your final outcome, know how things are going to turn out. And I think that that's a great place to start when we're looking at analysing spiritual health. What is spiritual health and how do I get it and what do I do, do I when I've got it? it? How do I mm. keep it? And what about even, we'll talk about that as well, what if we thought we had it at one point but we've kind of lost it along the way? How yeah. do we yeah, kind of get on, um, on track? But. Um, how do we, first of all, how would we assess our spiritual health? Because there could be people watching. Um, we could have people watching who, viewers watching, who are not Christian. I think, what are you talking about spiritual health? And what kind of like barometer have you got for assessing that? So maybe that's a good place to start. Yeah, I think it comes, um, I, I say to people that I, it, it's different for a lot of people, but how it happened for me was I realised that we lived in an entirely designed system. Uh, from very early on, I just knew, I didn't buy into the whole Darwin thing. I wasn't religious back at school. I was given a thumpingly good education through Charterhouse. But even then I knew, I, mean, I was getting A grades in evolution, I just knew the whole thing was just tosh. Um, because if you look around, everything is highly organised. And of course, if you look scientifically at everything like DNA and everything that I cover in the first Origins book, it's pretty clear that we live in a very, very elaborate design system. So then the next question is, well, who's the designer? You know, who's the boss? Who made this thing? And that, of course, um, raises the issue of accountability. Mm -hmm. In other words, we live in a world today where people don't feel they're accountable for what they do anymore. And, and it's a mess. It's, it's chaos out there. People feel that there's no accountability, there's going to be no comeback, the police have got absolutely no respect um, for, uh, from a lot of the population anymore because they don't see the criminals being punished. That's more a problem with the justice system more than the police. But I think that um, it starts with repentance. It starts with understanding that we're not gods, as we think we are, some of us, but uh, we're mortal. And there is a day in our future with our name on it. I got an email the other day, Dear Philip, I'm frightened of dying. Uh, all in upper, uh, uppercase. Uh, Dear John, the death rate is still one per person with a 100% hit ratio. We're all going to make it. And it, death is the ultimate level, and, and that freaks people out. It also concentrates their minds. And I believe our mortality is the point because it drives you to repentance, it drives you to humility, and it drives you to understand that we're part of a much bigger, awesome picture that's unfolding. Uh, absolutely amazing. So, um, you know, by... By getting to the point, and I think the older we get, that sort of, uh, you know, realm of, you know, our mortality becomes ever more prevalent. Definitely cuts uh, in in your 40s, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, you can get away with it for so long and you live a, a life in a way um, where, you, you know, we all think we're going to live forever. Even though we know we're not, mm. we live as though we are. But as you say, post 40, you kind of, I don't know, something just happens and then, you know, over 50, whatever. Well, there, was a, there was a great quote by David Attenborough. Um, you know, uh, uh, arch evolutionist David said, uh, he said, when you're in your 20s, life is swashbuckling stuff. But when you get into your 80s, suddenly you'll just become more unsure about everything. Yeah. You, know? and you question more. You question more. You definitely start asking the four big questions. Who am I? Where did I come from? What am I doing here? And what's going to happen to me when this life is over? And of course, depending on whether or not you're a Christian or any other religion for that matter, you're going to answer those four questions in different ways. 
Yeah, and I think that that's um, uh, that that's good to hone in on here because these are big questions, and they could be um, people watching or Christians watching. Think, yeah, how can I relay this to other people who are maybe just in need of another spiritual MOT or yeah. their first spiritual a nudge, MOT? A little yeah. nudge. Exactly. Yeah. So, how do we go about this? Well, a lot of the times, I mean, there are many watching this program who will uh, who will testify to the fact that they came to the Lord through. Uh, after or during a period of, of major attrition, you know, problems in their lives. You know, when we're living in a world of prosperous ease, when things are running right, we seem to have no need for God. It's only when suddenly there's a hiccup in the plane and the plane you're flying in down to Costa Brava suddenly lurches a thousand feet. All of a sudden you become very religious. Uh -huh. And um, so it's, God often meets us in, in, in that moment of need when we just start to freak out and, and get scared. And then as soon as the fear is over with, we, we kind of forget about it. So this brings us back to the point that bad things do happen to good people. And the question we've got to ask is, um, is he a God of everything or isn't he? If he is a God of everything, then like I said, it's being permitted, it's being allowed, mm -hmm. because you can't have it both ways. Mm -hmm. um, if you're an evolutionist or you don't believe in God, then you live in the dog eat dog world of, of world of Darwin, where everyone's climbing the greasy pole to the top and you're kicking and scratching and biting your way um, in which case, why wouldn't you murder? Why wouldn't you rape and steal? Because that's essentially what it takes to get to the... Survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we clearly know that that's not the world we live in. Um, there's all sorts of problems with Darwinism, which I cover in detail in uh, Origins. And by the way, I think Christian authors in the past have been too, have been too kind and polite to Darwin. Uh, in I'm Origins, scared. in origin, uh, In Origins, I put my big hobnail boots on and I go for it. Uh, and just on that subject, you know, uh, you can uh, get hold of Philip's books. The Origin series is a great place to start if you really want to know just how spiritually healthy are you or you're just looking at more information to confirm your own experience and, and, and what you already know, um, which is excellent. Um, so these are, the, these are the big questions which some people out there will feel they've already answered. You know, they, they say, I know where I am, doesn't matter where I come from. I'm not, you know, I'm not here for anything in particular. And when it all goes, um, you know, paid at the end and I die, and that's just the end of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, if they're right, if they're right, and mm -hmm. we've got many reasons to believe that they're not, but if they are right, well, okay, so at the end of it, it's nothingness and mm -hmm. the consequences aren't really great. If, however, they're wrong and what we believe is right, that's, there, there are drastically serious consequences that Absolutely. need to be addressed. So this spiritual health program is really important. Well, again, uh, you've hit it on the head. Um, <laughs> if you are a Christian and you believe in the Lord and his son, and you believe in repentance, and you believe in living a simple life as holy as you can you know, before God, um, being thankful, if, if it turns out we're wrong, we led a, a half decent life, right? Yeah. And we helped a bunch of people and mm -hmm. okay, so we were wrong. And we're back to stardust. You know, we become Jupiter, <laughs> whatever. Um, but like you say, it's all a very, very different ball of wax if, if in fact, you believe the that there is right. no accountability. Mm -hmm. And I say to people, look, just stop and just set religion to one side. And by the way, the word religion is completely misunderstood, and we'll deal with that in a minute. Set that to one side. Let me ask you a question. If you eat all the wrong stuff, will the laws of nutrition hold you accountable? Yes. <laughs> yes if you go to the top of a 40-storey building, and I care not how righteous you are, and you jump off it, will the laws of physics hold you accountable? That's absolutely. Yes. So there's a, we live in a world that's accountable all the way through. So where do we find the arrogance to imagine that there is not an ultimate accountability for how we live our lives? Mm -hmm. And that's the whole point. So people get a sense, you know, they often say, well, it's a God-shaped vacuum, fine. But people get a sense that there's a lot more to what's going on in this mm -hmm. life than, than perhaps um, Time magazine or National Geographic gives us credit for. And that's when, that's the point at where God will meet you. Sometimes he meets you in your darkest moments um, under the darkest of skies, and sometimes he doesn't. But there are very interesting verses in the Bible that seem to, that seem to um, point, uh, I counted maybe 20 of them, where God has a people picked out from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. And we don't know who those are. Um, you know, and often I think, well, could, could I be one of them or am I going to be a faker? Am I going to be a tear rather than, a, rather than wheat? Mm -hmm. So these questions have, kind of, have gone through my mind. Because um, sometimes I do think, I think I'm, I'm, 
I'm f am I faking it or am I, am I the genuine article? And that brings you back to repentance again. I even think the fact that you're asking that <clears throat> says a lot in itself. Well, we're I know. On pretty yeah. sure ground. The fact that that would even cross your mind. Yeah. That you know, and I think, I, I, I think most of us at some point, doesn't matter how long we've been Christians, we think, you know, but am I really? You know, how many of us have responded more than once to the whole sort of, do I need to get right before God and. Yeah. Uh, almost like get born again again yeah. just to doubly make sure and I, I and I think that's actually quite encouraging because the fact that you're even concerned about that um, is the conviction of the, Holy, the Spirit. Conviction of the Holy Spirit yeah that yeah. you are yeah yeah and and I'm you know it, it, when I'm reading the newspapers every day as part of my job I you feel like you want a bath after doing that every single day <laughs> but when you really read, read some of the awful things that go on in this world of ours and how they're gleefully reported through the national media, and there's never any really good news ever reported. You know that this is Satan's system. And isn't it interesting? I mean, I got an email the other day um, from an unbeliever. He said, how do you reconcile two scriptures that appear to be um, contradicting one another? For, I go, which of those? Well, first of all, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so God loves the world. And then we're told um, in 1 John, love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So how do you answer that? Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting one, coming from somebody who's not even a believer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that means the Holy Spirit's tugging at them, number mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Is Satan the god of this world? The answer is mm -hmm. we're told he is. Mm -hmm. And certainly when you look around, it's quite clear that we're not yeah. in the millennial kingdom just yeah. yet, yeah. right? Yeah. So if this is Satan's world, then God must be allowing it. And if mm -hmm. God's allowing it, because God could squish Satan in an instant, mm -hmm. then why is God allowing that? And that's an interesting point that we cover in the Origins series mm -hmm. because I believe, and I think all the evidence points to the fact that we're undergoing a training program. Yeah. I said to my, I, I put this to one of my non-believing researchers. I go, why do you think you're actually here? Uh, he said, well, if you do ascribe design to where you mm -hmm. live, then we're here for one of three reasons. We're either here for punishment, entertainment, or education. Mm. I said, spot on, yeah. it's education. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's certainly not entertainment. <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Depends on your, your view of entertainment. And um, I just want to back up slightly. You said religion, the word religion yeah. is very often misunderstood. If we can just go back to that, what do you mean by that? Well, there's a, um, I love this uh, quote by James, pure religion and undefiled before, a pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, colon, right? So we're about to be told by the Lord's brother what pure and undefiled religion before God is. Mm -hmm. Now, is it um, giving loads of money away? Is it uh, going on your knees? Is it um, going to church all the time? Mm -hmm. Is it, no, it's uh, this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Mm -hmm. So obviously do good to others, mm -hmm. right? But look at that other bit, to keep oneself unspotted. Well, that the ties in with what you were saying um, in, the, uh, in John's letters in terms of, you know, love not the world. Yeah. Separate if we have to keep ourselves from. unspotted from the world, that's saying exactly the same thing as don't love the world. doesn't mean that God doesn't love the people in the world, Quite but well. it's talking about a system that you've attributed already, um, Philip, in saying that Satan is the God of this world. And that he's blinded the minds of the unbelievers as well. Um, and really, we're, we're, I suppose what you're saying is, you know, if we're here for education, what have we been educated in and, you know, when do we know if we pass the exam and, mm -hmm. you know, do we get a trophy at the end of it? What happens? Well, I think it goes back to, I was asked a question again the other day by an unbeliever. Well, if there is a God, then how come World War I happened? Mm -hmm. I go, well, it wasn't Jesus firing the phosgene gas over the yeah. foreign trenches. It wasn't, it wasn't the Lord loading up the Maxim machine guns and mowing down people coming across mm -hmm. no man's land. That was men mm -hmm. doing that. Mm -hmm. And... You can't have, if God is love, you cannot have love in a world with no free will. Yeah. So we have free will, and this is where it gets sticky, and God understands that, because if you give your creatures free will, then you're giving them the free will to make a choice whether they love you or hate you. Mm -hmm. And that being the case, um, that's how you get love, but it's also how you get the antithesis yeah. of love, yeah. which and some people say is hate. I, don't, I prefer to think the antithesis of love is actually indifference. Yeah. Yeah, when good point. Uh, yeah, because I mean, that would take you right back to the Garden of Eden. And a lot of people will say, well, why did he put that tree there in the first place? You know, why couldn't we have just to eat from all the trees because they're all good and do what you like? Yeah. You've just you've just answered that question. And that is, how do you know 
if your children are going to love you and be mm -hmm. obedient to you if you don't give them an opportunity mm -hmm. not to love you and to disobey that's right. you. That's right. So I mean, if you look at if you look at um, mm -hmm. you know uh, King David, I mean, he had tremendous problems with his family right the way up until he died. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we don't know what how our children are going to turn out. I think what we do know though is that. Um, when we start having a look and seeing how free will fits into all of this, mm -hmm. what we get out of this is that ultimately there's only going to be one will in the universe and it's not going to be Philip Day's. So what God wants us to do of our own volition, of our own accord, is to harmonize our will with his. Mm -hmm. Do the will of God. People go, well, what is God's will? God's will is God's ways. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord and don't do the things I've asked you to do? Okay. And when we when we look at the example that Jesus sets, for instance, I mean, that's a st stiff mark to follow when you think about it. It's hard to imagine that. But God wants to see us trying. That's yeah. the whole point. And that's yeah. where... To, it's, it's, the whole thing is about volition. It's about wanting... It's your heart. Wanting to do I, the right thing. And that's interesting you bring up King David because he was described as a man after God's heart, and yet, you know, it's like, hello. You know, some yeah. things in his past, some not so good choices shall we say and and but, but even yeah, look but, at, but he, look how, his look how heart that turned was, out yeah. with Bathsheba yeah in, in absolutely his, in and Solomon. Solomon yeah yeah right? no no absolutely and God God can bless you but it's like David would David had a contrite heart Psalm 51 you know he would come back and he would you know he would see, he acknowledged his sin he didn't try and hide it he made some poor poor choices what I think is interesting there and that comes on to you know again what we're talking about is Although he was forgiven, his sin and poor choices had consequences. Yes. And sometimes I think in terms of our own spiritual health, we're thinking we can sin and then we just go, oh, sorry, Lord, because we've now repented and then yeah. that makes everything. No, there are still consequences to some of the choices we've made. Yeah. But we can still stay in close fellowship with God. Well, that's it. It's the relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, those two, those two or three terrifying verses in Matthew 7, not all who say, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but mm -hmm. he who does the will mm -hmm. of my Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. Many will say to me on that day. And it goes on to describe some pretty advanced Christians doing things, casting out demons or, and signs yeah, some, and wonders. Yeah. And Jesus says, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. Well, I, and the key word there is um, knew you, not yeah. I used to know you. Yeah. And now I don't know you anymore. Yeah, yeah. I never knew you in the, first, in the place. first place. Yeah. I never knew you in the first place. You might have thought you knew me, but I never knew you. That is a scary prospect. Yeah, yeah. That is a, a bit of a wake up there's call. A pa there's it? a passage in the Old Testament where, um, uh, where it says, um, did you not do well? Did you not help the poor? Did you not do this and that? Was not this knowing me, says the Lord. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which is a, a, an interesting yeah. tie up to that whole thing. It's about a relationship. Mm -hmm. And the question is, for everybody, and, and I say, I, I, I'm asking myself this all the time, do I have a proper relationship with God? Uh, and the answer is, when I get out of bed in the morning, what I try to do is, um, I mean, I do um, a few hours on the phones, I'm answering countless emails all mm -hmm. the time, mostly from people who want information on things. And the key here is, I just still don't feel I do enough a lot of the time, because... Um, there's so much out there. But as a friend of mine said, hey, there's always going to be poor people, there's always going to be sick people. Um, you know, it's a never-ending tide. And it's, yeah, and um, it's like that old um, saying, how do you put all the starfish back in the sea? And the answer is one at a time. Yeah. And, and God sees our hearts. God sees our hearts. And, y you know, when it's, it's, this isn't, and I, I, I want to make this clear for the viewers, um, this isn't a message of condemnation. This isn't to put a, a heavy burden on you. This is, where's your heart? Is your heart genuinely to please the Lord? That's a good sign that you know him, mm. yeah, and that he knows you. And if you know each other, you're in relationship. And if you know each other, he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. But the real question for, in terms of the, the spiritual health here is, do you know him yeah. and does he know you? It's, it's, it's fascinating. And, and I, the, the other thing I also, also uh, notice a lot is that unbelievers will, will try every which way to get out from underneath mm -hmm. the relationship mm -hmm. because they, that means accountability, pure and simple. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that humans, the carnal mind cannot deal with that at all. And um, 
That, I mean, that's the essence of Satanism, was Alistair Crowley's, do what thou wilt should be the whole of the law. In other words, there's only one law, do what you want. Yeah. Is that popular today? You bet. Yeah. Yeah, if it feels good, do it. Yeah. You know, we're not answerable. And, you know, even if you think of, you know, um, Darwin, the whole theory of evolution, um, it is, it's all about if we come from monkeys and, and whatever, no if we don't accident, there yeah. is no ultimate plan. Um, you know, there's nothing there to stop me doing what I want. And also, the day I die, nobody's going to ask me any questions. I think. Again, indicative of the time that we live in, there is, it's like God says in his word that he's put et eternity within the heart of man. So you've got a lot of people searching out there, a lot of them looking in all the wrong areas, but a lot of them genuinely looking for, they've got a void that Satan's only too quick to want to fill with crystals and stardust and pixie dust and you know a whole host of other things and say there that will satisfy the the spiritual side of you um but they're looking in all the the wrong areas but you see it's not popular when we start looking it's like people will they can deal with god you start bringing jesus into the equation they can't deal with jesus no, that's, they can't. They really can't. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. The problem right there is the name itself yes. just totally turns people off and is designed to, I think, because that's the, to me, that's the, that's the barometer. Well, there is no other name yeah, under heaven right. of which men Give can be saved. Name, yeah. uh, you know, you're going to stub your toe. The devil wants to make sure you get the word right. Yeah, you get true, the name that's... right. He's not going to have you saying anything else. He'll just make sure whether you believe in him or not, you mm. get that name right. And that's, it's just, it, it, it is really, um, it's scary, Philip, how many people, it's like, we can just be walking around in this fog. So, brings us back to our own spiritual health. How are we walking with the Lord? And, and, what can, and also, what can, what can we do? What kind of, you know, are there checks and balances that we can do to, to sort of our, our own barometer? And how do we affect the lives of those around us and their spiritual health? Well, Jesus came as an example. So the first thing we can start doing is instead of turning inward and, and pre preoccupying ourselves with our own problems, the first thing we can start to do is just do good for others. Yeah. You know, before you even take your coat off, just start doing good for others. I mean, it's hard. It's, it's the easiest thing in the world these days is to get all snappy and, and upset. I mean, we both had traffic issues getting in, <laughs> getting in today. You know, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. not the M25 yeah. again. Yeah. You know, the easiest thing in the world is to, is to fixate on your own problems. Doing good for others um, until it comes from the heart is what the Lord would have us do, you know. And also this whole thing of sin no more uh, is interesting because lots of us um, are persistent in our sin, you know, and we go through that and it bothers us a lot. Or well, there's an area of our life which we don't have any control over. And so we're constantly, oh God, please, you know, help me out of this, help me out of this. I'll never forget when I was um, in my late teens, early 20s, I was smoking, I was like 40 cigarettes. I would light a cigarette from the butt of the previous cigarette. Oh I was smoking, I was in the music industry at the time. And I was like locked in dark st studios, you know, mixing tracks. And I was like, smoke, 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 all the time. And, um, I remember just constantly saying, it went on for years, I kept saying, take this away from me, take this away from me. And then often I'd think to myself, shouldn't I actually take it away from myself? Mm -hmm. Is that really how the game is played? Is that what I've got to do? Yeah. But I have to say that one morning I woke up and it was gone. And it was stunning, it was gone. Do you know, to this day, there's not a day that goes by I don't thank God for doing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But I went through that whole agony. Mm -hmm. And you know, there are people watching this who know that. If it's smoking, it may not be smoking, it might be drinking, it might be, you know, drugs, yeah. it could be anything. Um, but it's the process. We were discussing, before we started this program, you said, have we really got to be put through all of this? Mm -hmm. And my whole thing is yes, because this is part of the training program. It'd be a bit like if you were running a multinational corporation, right? You're the, you're the top dog, you're the CEO. You're going to hire someone who's going to come in underneath you, who's going to be your number two. So how do you know that they're the genuine article? Probably what you would do is you do a background check on them, you know, but they might have given you the thing, you know, they might be getting you to see the bit of them they want you to see. And what you do is you leave some money around. You just kind of see, try to get them to, try to uh, have them see you and see them in situations they would rather not have you see them in. Uh, that's the way, when you put them through the fire, that's how you learn the true measure of a man or woman, in my view.
And I think that's so, part of the training that we're undergoing. And so, um, in many ways, that's being encouraged today if you're going through a particularly hard time. Um, I'm not obviously talking about, you know, necessarily a hard time because you've been involved in something and these are re the repercussions. But if you're going through life and you're thinking, what is going on? I seem to be getting hit from all angles. You know, I'm not saying that the Lord designed that for you, but for whatever reason that has happened in your life and he is on the throne and he has allowed that. Um, so maybe we can actually take encouragement then, Philip, from the fact if we're going, well, the, the word of God says count it pure joy when you're going through trials and tribulations. How many of us actually do that? Well, again, um, I was asked the other day, you know, if God, wants his, if God wants to get his message across to us, why does it have to come in a book two inches thick? Yeah. Why can't you just write it on a beer mat? And the answer is because what God wants you to see is people going through this process time and time again. I mean, yeah. you go through the Old Testament, it's a pretty grim slog when you're going through Judges, seeing, you know, the constant cycle repeating and repeating and repeating. And then you get to David and Solomon and then you come all the way down through the prophets. But what God wants to show us, uh, and, and this is what I'm trying to highlight in the Origin series, is that there's a process underway here. Yeah. And you've got to submit to yourself to it, okay? And if you don't, then you don't. And that's, you know, you've exercised free will in doing that. And um, so many of you have uh, gone for the Origin series uh, in the past and it's really blessed you. Uh, there's a whole wealth of knowledge and not just that, it's a, fa or they are, I should say, a fascinating read. It's like, uh, almost like, I just want to see them made into films one day because it's just incredible what you've packed into those and how, how as well, Philip, that you, you take all these aspects and it just makes sense to us all. Um, I, and that's truly brilliant as well. So, you know, credence.org, we've been putting the website there up on your screen, um, not just for origins, but a whole wealth of other information as well there. Um, can't believe it in the closing moments yet again. You're kidding. <laughs> no, it's that we've, we've barely scratched the surface, but somebody out there in the remaining couple of minutes that we have left is thinking spiritual health. How can I be healthy? How can I stay healthy spiritually? Spiritually, I just get straight in the Word. In fact, I'll go straight to one of the Gospels and start working through that, and I'll just, I'll just read it. I'll just go through it. Maybe I've read it, you know, you know, 50, 60 times, but I always get something out of it because it centers me, and there's something about that book that's more than the sum of its pages. Yeah. There's spirits at work here, and everyone feels it. All they've got to do is they've got to allow it. They've got to permit it to work in their lives. Yeah, and it's, um, it's the way the Bible describes itself. It's, um, it's the living word, and it's also likened to, you know, it's a reflection. So when you look and you're reading that word, you're looking at yourself. Yeah, you are. Either thinking, okay, this is good, or, oh, it isn't good. So it's a great reflection. It's a looking in the mirror. Let the Bible be your mirror in terms of the gauge regarding your spiritual health. Stay close to the Lord. Keep short accounts. And Philip, what can I say? Thank you so, so much. An absolute pleasure as always. Uh, as I did mention, this is part of a series that we're doing. And uh, it's been really good having your company today. Stay with Revelation TV. Uh, we'll have lots more, I'm sure, uh, to keep you glued to your screens. And until the next time, God bless you all. See you very soon here on Revelation TV.